Since the election, our Prime Minister has made a big issue about suicide and mental health. Would raising New START and reducing punitive social security obligations be the fastest way to make a dent in the rate of suicide and domestic violence amongst the country's three million poor people? Erica Betts, that's putting it not in an economic framework, but in a social framework, a human framework. I'm not sure what the statistics are in relation to uh, the scourge that is uh, besetting our society in relation to uh, suicide, but uh, trying to link the two together, I'm not sure uh, necessarily is borne out by the social data, because uh, regrettably people that have a lot of wealth commit suicide, um, our return service men and women, that's mm -hmm. a real problem. Um, blokes with marital breakdowns often as well. Uh, so there's the scourge of suicide, I think, uh, cannot be just addressed in relation to the issue of uh, a welfare payment with respect. Not Both only, serious issues. But isn't issues. it fair to say that, see that poverty is a stress in life? I mean, there was a, a report oh. recently about Indigenous Australians and taking suicide and on poverty, being trapped in poverty, was a contributor given there? Poverty uh, clearly is a stress in life, but uh, there are many poor communities around the world that don't suffer the scourge of suicide that we suffer uh, in Australia and in the Western world. So I suspect there are other factors at play other than just the issue of poverty. And when I say just the issue of poverty, mm. I don't mean to demean it in any way. Pano? From my observation, <clears throat> living in, in areas which were quite poor years ago, um, it was the poverty, the poverty caused stress, but it was actually the hopelessness that led to other factors. It was hopelessness that led to people feeling like they didn't want to live anymore and, and led to the kind of frustrations that led to domestic violence. Um, and that hopelessness came from not being able to get a job, not knowing how to go about getting a job. So not that it was even the step before sort of applying for the job. I had people coming to me and saying, can you help me with my CV? I don't know how to do this. Nobody in my family has ever had a job. And so that, that really deep hopelessness and helplessness has much more to do, I would suggest, with with mental illness and with um, with rates of suicide in poor areas than, than the rate of the allowance which, um, which supports people in that time. Tim Costello, though, is there a relationship between hopelessness and New Start to some degree? I mean, if you're feeling trapped in poverty and, and would a lift in New Start do anything to relieve that? Yeah, I have no doubt it would. I think the fundamental question all humans ask is, do I matter? And hopelessness comes when you think you don't count. And I think people in New Start being condemned to live on such an impossibly low, below the poverty line, know they're expendable, they're dispensable, that they don't matter. And uh, I agree with Eric uh, that there's lots of reasons for suicide. Uh, when Australia has youth suicide at epidemic levels, uh, clearly the lack of meaning, the pointlessness of life, the, the nihilism of life uh, contributes. But uh, there's no doubt in my mind that uh, in a society that measures your worth uh, by the school you go to, the car you drive, the brand clothes you wear, uh, we're always, as social beings, scanning the horizon. To be poor uh, actually says you don't matter. To be poor certainly, I think, uh, says that hopelessness and therefore mental illness is intensified. Kimberly, do you see or accept any kind of link between a low level of new start and feeling poor and levels of domestic yeah. violence and suicide and hopelessness? Well, I think Yes, I think there is a level of that. And there's a really good book about this called, by J.D. Vance, which is a memoir. It's called Hillbilly Elegy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really an explication in some ways of why middle America uh, voted for Donald Trump. And uh, it's, I really recommend it. But he, there is a terribly poignant moment in that book where he realises he goes... He manages to get away from... He's never lived in a functional household... He realises he's really very rarely done homework where someone's not throwing something across the table at him. Uh, and he goes, manages to get out to the US Marine Corps. They look after him. He goes to Ohio State. He gets accepted to Yale Law. And 
when he goes back before he goes to Yale, he realises that he's different from everyone else around him and it takes him some time to analyse this, but he realises it's because he has hope. And there, that is a terrible indictment on Western society. Terrible. Adam? I think it's a fundamental question of dignity. You know, New Start is there to help people who have quite often lost employment. It's, it's people who are 63% are aged between 35 and 65 years old and losing a job isn't just losing a source of income, it's also losing a support structure, losing friends, often leaving you quite alone. And if you find yourself in that situation, the worst thing that we can do is say to you that you are not worthy of a wage that allows you to live. You know, we have to allow, Ustart has to be there to get people back on their feet, get them back into employment. And that's not just paying the money, it's also putting them back into a system where they can help their mental health with the people around them. And just on that point, before we leave this, which we must leave it because we've got so many good issues to go to tonight, um, but that notion of it being a, a temporary payment, there's more and more older Australians, people over 55, something like 173,000 <coughs> of them on Newstart who f can't find work and are waiting basically till they get to pension age. That's a problem, isn't it, Erica Betts? Oh, clearly it is a problem and that is why as a government one, we focus on job creation and also providing incentives to employers to take on mature age uh, because trying to get people in employment, that's <coughs> the best welfare system that a government can deliver and that is what we seek to focus on, but we've got to make sure that we don't leave behind those that are unfortunate enough not to get it.